I love the laughter when people are laughing and nothing's coming out. That's the best way. Like, ah! <laughs> That's the best. On this episode of Three Shots, Three Questions, we're with the funniest man ever to come out of the Rio Grande Valley. Stand-up comedian, the man of many voices, die-hard Cowboys fan, one and only Raymond Orta. The number one in the game, so get used to the name, baby. Should we take the first shot? Well, 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 well first of all, thank you for I'm joining just, us. I'm just excited to drink. I'll tell you how the show goes. We'll take a shot of tequila, I'll ask you a question. We'll repeat that for questions two and three. Okay, you ready? sounds good. Let's do this. Let's do it. Salute to your health and your wealth, my friend. Yeah, that's, like just, that's yeah. smooth, bro. Yeah, it's like it's it. good, quality. Right, you can tell it's a crappy tequila. Look. I first heard about you 11, 12 years ago. I was, it was Whoa. my second senior year at UTPA. I just remember hearing about this, this guy, Raymond Orta, that did com comedy, but at that time, there was no, there was no comedy clubs, there was no comedy nights. What is it that made you decide, I'm gonna commit myself to this, I'm gonna be a comedian? Dude, I'm surprised that, you, like, that you've been following me that long, bro, that's crazy. I used to do stand-up comedy shows in people's apartments. We'd pack in an apartment, put them all in the couches on the floor in bean bags, and we'd have like 50 people in an apartment living room because there was no comedy club. I joined a fraternity and we would do the comedy shows at the fraternity house, and it was my way of paying rent. I'd have 100 people at this comedy show because I knew so many people on campus. I was like the Van Wilder of campus. They'd show up and I'd charge five bucks at the door and I'd pay off my rent, have some booze money, ramen noodle soup money and uh, be alive for the week, bro. We were trying to figure out fundraisers on what to do for the fraternity. We would bust our ass all day, and the money, it was like three, 400 bucks, and it was just so much hard work for bullshit money. I'm like, dude, let's just rent the Student Union Theater at Pan Am, at now at UTRGV Vaqueros, and use it as a student fundraiser for our organization. Dude, we started making money crazy just by me doing comedy. I'm like, nobody has to barbecue chicken all night long. Nobody has to do potato salad. Nobody's mom has to do the rice. And sure enough, it turned into one of our most lucrative fundraisers. I knew that I was onto something. Truth be told, I was doing comedy at Cantinas, dude, at 15 years old. That's where I grew my chops, bro. If you can make drunk Mexicanos laugh, bro, you can go into a comedy club where they're ready to laugh and papitas, bro. Dude, that's a great story. I, that was a, a lot more of a story than I even expected here, so I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> Shot number Cheers two question to you, my two. friends, to the Dallas so Cowboys good. winning the Super Bowl. Cheers. So you were doing comedy, you know, you start building a name for yourself. What was that turning point? It's gonna sound not conventional, but I started taking care of my health. I was in such a bad place. I was well, really overweight. I was 330 pounds. And when I started taking care of my health, everything else just fell into place. The turning point you'd say, would probably people say would, would be the Cowboys video. They're gonna beat the pinches Panthers, bro. Vas a ver, bro, hey. Papa, pinche Super Bowl ya regresó, pinche Romo, bato. Puro pinche Romo, yo soy Romo sexual, culero. Hey, prenda la vela, prenda la vela, bro. Prenda la vela de Tony Romo, hey, prenda la. Hey, puro pinche Cowboys a la verga, bro. Never in my life did I think that was the thing that was gonna go viral. I put it out and my phone started just going, it just wouldn't stop and I was like, pinche T-Mobile. I looked at the video, within a minute, it had like a thousand likes. People started following me for these, for these things and now they expect, they expect me to put out these videos every Sunday. It's part of the ritual. Once you're part of somebody's ritual, you're, they're your fan for life, bro. You hear that shit, baby? You know what that is? That's a sweet sound of victory, baby. Put up in check cowboys. People have gone out to my shows with their face painted. Like they're at a fucking tailgate. That takes us right into the third question and third shot. Salute. Delicious tequila. Raymond, this is only the beginning for you. What can fans expect next? Man, dude, I have a show coming up called Puro Laughter. It's gonna be like the new Que Locos. I'm gonna have comedians uh, doing stand-up. I'm gonna be essentially giving comedians a platform to showcase their skills. Think about this, bro. This is deep shit. This is deep shit. Three tequila shots in, we're deep, okay? Exclusive deep shit? This is what this is what the show's known for. I'm, what I'm about to say right now sounds very awful. In the grand scheme of things, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. But if I could have someone die at one of my shows, I mean, everybody has to die, but if you could go out in a fit of laughter, ugh. Oh. Bro, if I'm gonna go out, I wanna go out laughing. That's what I say. And I go on stage sometimes and I laugh at my own jokes. If God could grant me such an artistic death that I could die laughing at my own joke, 
I would be so blissfully happy to just go out like that. Here lies Raymond Orta, died laughing at his own joke. <laughs> Such died. a cocky asshole. <laughs> that would be the ultimate <laughs> cocky thing to do. That's, yeah, that's right up my alley. Here, my that friends. That is real shit. Raymond, I appreciate your time, man. I really do. I've been doing comedy since I was in third grade. Yeah. Crushing it, dude. I, I've known since I'm it. serious, bro. Crushing it in third grade? Crushing it. I did talent shows, dude. I won every single talent show in my elementary school. I remember this joke. I wrote it myself, and it was based on my schoolyard observation as an eight year old kid. And it's like, I don't know even bother why kids bother getting into fights at school. It never turns into an actual fist to cuffs, it only turns into a battle of who could lean back the furthest. And it's like, hey, pues que? Hey, pues que? Hey, pues que? And I would start leaning back like if I was representing two people and then eventually one guy would fall down to the ground like all the way down like Matrix, right? And then it'd be like, oh, that guy won. He leaned back the furthest, but he broke his back. What's up guys? This is Raymond Orta telling you one time so you don't forget it. Puro pinche cowboys culeros y el que se agüita se encuera culeros. Woo!